what a joy it is for me to speak to you today. When we think about the cross of Christ, what comes to your mind? Cross was a symbol of shame, a symbol of defeat, a symbol of curse. And over the centuries, a group of people have held the cross and said, this is the sign of victory. This is a sign of hope. This is a sign of salvation. How do you take that message? I'm sure most of you who are watching me right now have understood the message of the cross. That is why we sing that beautiful song, Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid, bearing all my sins upon yourself on the cross. Yes, my dear people of God, cross is about Jesus sacrificing his life for our sins. And there are several words used in the New Testament to describe that action. What we see on the cross is Jesus dying on our behalf, the substitutionary death of Christ. Yes, what we see on the cross is ransom is paid. The wrath of God is satisfied. We see reconciliation there. We see restoration there. We see the price paid and we set free from the power of sin. Now, there is something very interesting about cross. On one side we say, I see victory there. I see that I am set free there. My healing is there on the cross. But 1 Corinthians 1.18 says, the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. And Paul says, but for us it is the power of God. Now, why is the message of the cross foolishness to the people who are perishing? That is when I want you to listen to me carefully. Cross radically redefined. The idea of power the idea of wisdom, the idea of success, all of it is redefined on the cross. In the ancient world, in the first century, power is not to be crucified on the cross. Power is to crucify somebody else on the cross. Caesar and governor would command, go crucify. That is the power. But you see power redefined when the Son of God is hung on the cross and he said, Father, forgive them. This is not the power to rule. This is the power to forgive. You know what the ancient people thought about wisdom? In the philosophical school, wisdom was understood like this. Gods should not be affected by any external forces. No external forces should bring happiness no external forces should bring sadness, pain. That is the philosophical thought world in the first century. That is when you see Jesus. His disciples are worshipping him. They are following the Messiah. Now you see Son of God suffering on the cross, crying out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The wisdom of the world cannot understand Jesus as the Son of God. That is why it is said, it is foolishness to those who are perishing. When you look with naked eyes, physical eyes, it is powerlessness. But here you see the radical paradox of Christianity. You see that when Jesus is dying, we have the life. When Jesus was cursed, according to Galatians 3, in his curse, we are set free. Blessing comes upon us. We are wounded healers. Now this much of the message is known to everyone. We have salvation. Yes, it is veiled for some people. But for us who believe, when Holy Spirit works in us, we know it is power of God. It is wisdom of God. It is salvation. Jesus was cursed for me. Jesus was buying the salvation for me. But the second part of the message is crucial, my dear friends. It is one thing to say, thank you for the cross. 
But it is totally another thing to say. When Jesus was going around and telling people, carry the cross and follow me. When Paul said, I have only one thing to boast, that is the cross of Christ. When Paul said, I want to identify with the death of Christ in Philippians chapter 3 verse 10. Something more is emerging. I want to tell you this. Cross is not just an instrument Christ used to die. Cross is a model for us to follow. Have you ever considered that? Cross, to look at the cross and say, thank you for the cross. I am saved. It is one thing. But do you see on the cross a model for discipleship? Crossless preaching will lead to costless discipleship. Costless discipleship will lead to Christless witnessing. Think about that. In the 21st century, we see a lot of shallowness in Christianity. We want to wear a cross around our neck. But have we considered discipleship, which involves carrying the cross? When we don't speak on cross-shaped life, we will see a very shallow Christian life where the witnessing doesn't take place. I want to leave you with one verse here. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 3 and even if our gospel is wailed it is wailed to those who are perishing Paul says the gospel is wailed to some people when we live a Christian discipleship of taking the cross our life too may be wailed people might look at our life and say you are losing your battles people might look at you and say you are a fool but enough to know if the Father is pleased in our lives. I like that beautiful hymn which came out around 100 years back. Jesus keep me near the cross. There a precious fountain. Free to all a healing stream. Flows from Calvary mountain. And the hymn goes on. The last four lines. Near the cross I'll watch and wait. Hoping, trusting ever. I will watch and wait. Hoping, trusting ever. To see Jesus as my savior. Yes. To see Jesus as a model to follow. I will wait. I will follow him. Till I reach the golden strand. Just beyond the river. My dear people of God. Look at Jesus on the cross. He is the savior. Look at Jesus on the cross. He is a model for us in discipleship. May God richly bless you by this message. Amen.